Welcome to Kingdom Now. I'm John Carmichael, pastor at Evangel North Church, and I am so glad that you have tuned in today. I believe powerful revelation is coming your way today from what we're going to be talking about, and I want to encourage you. Get on the phone, get on your computer, tell people about this, because this is going to be a life-changing word for you. You're watching. I'm going to be sharing today a message called The Word Seed. In fact, this is part of a series that we preached at Evangel North Church that was life-changing revelation to me as well as to many in the congregation. And I believe this is going to be revelation to you. Get your Bibles out, your pen and a piece of paper, because I'm telling you this revelation will change your life. There's something written on your heart. It's the guiding force in your life. And when the storms of life come, the writing comes to the surface. Your story and all of its baggage is written on your heart. But there's another story, and God says that we are to write it on our hearts. The Bible, 66 books with over 30,000 verses. Now that sounds like a pretty tall order. But Jesus' life provides the perfect example of Scripture that is etched on the heart. When Jesus is tempted by Satan in the wilderness, his response is straight out of Deuteronomy. On his way to being crucified, Jesus continues to quote Scripture. And finally, as Jesus surrenders his spirit, he quotes Psalm 22. His father's words were on the front of his mind and on the tip of his tongue at every moment. But Jesus didn't just know the scriptures. He lived the scriptures. They weren't just words on a page to him. They were the foundation upon which he built his life. And God invites us to do the same. But Jesus said something pretty shocking about the scriptures. He confronted a group of religious leaders who were trying to earn eternal life by studying the scriptures and said to them, you're looking in the wrong place. The scriptures all point to one thing, me. For I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So don't think that the scriptures lead to eternal life. They don't. They lead to Jesus, the author of eternal life. And studying them is not about knowing a bunch of nice sayings. It's about knowing a person, Jesus. To know Jesus is to know Scripture. And to know Scripture is to know the heart of the Father. For it contains the very words of God. His words were meant to become a part of you, to course through your veins, to be lived out. Something is written on your heart, and it's either your words or God's. Either your story or God's story. Turn in your Bibles, if you would, to the book of Mark, chapter 4, verse 11. And I'm going to be sharing with you how that the Bible is more than just a book. It's more than just an emblem that we bring to church or more than just a symbol that we associate with grandparents. But the Bible is the source of how God can bring revelation to us how God can bring results in our lives, how God can bring fruit to you and I. Most people look at the Bible as just a static book. It's just got a cover, it's got ink on pages, words that some of us are familiar with and we see cross-stitched in our kitchen. But today I'm gonna to share with you how that that Bible is more than just words. It's more than just a book. I'm going to share with you that it's a bag of seed. It's a bag of seed that can produce a harvest in your life. When you realize that what is found in the pages of the Bible, what is found in the pages of the Revelation, in the Holy Writ, can produce results in our lives. But we've got to learn how to take the seed out of the bag plant it in the soil, and believe God for results. 
us in our lives. So I'm going to be sharing with you from a parable that Jesus taught in the book of Mark, chapter 4. I want you to write this down. I want you to study it on your own because I'm telling you that you are on the cusp of some great miracles. You're on the cusp of God being able to heal your life, heal your family, heal your church, heal your ministry. Friends, I'm telling you today that the source of all that God wants to produce in your life is found right there in that Bible. And so today, we're going to begin to increase our faith. I believe wisdom is coming to you. Revelation is coming to you based on Mark chapter 4, verse 11. Here's what Jesus said. He said, To you it has been given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But to those who are outside, all things come in parables. I want to stop right there. Many people believe that God's will and God's ways are so far beyond us that we can't know them. That God, that, that we can't understand them. And there's scriptures that, that people pull from, I will say part of scriptures, that people will pull from to say, well, I don't know what God's going to do. I don't know how God works. His ways are so much higher than our ways. And that is true if you think about the fact that God is able to do more. God is able to do better. God is able to do bigger. But if you're talking about Revelation, Jesus was looking at the disciples there in Mark 4.11. And He was saying to you, it has been given to know the mystery of the kingdom of of God. And he's going to begin to talk about the parable of the sower. He's going to talk about the seed. But before I even get into that, I just want to drop this nugget into you. God is not trying to hide anything from you. He's trying to reveal something to you. The Word of God should not be clouded. The Word of God should not be concealed. The Word is to be revealed. God is a revealing God. God wants to show you that what has been a mystery to us, what has been something that's been out there that we can't quite grasp and we can't quite get our arms around, God says, no, listen, I am one that freely gives you the knowledge of this mystery. The mystery of the kingdom. What is the word kingdom? We title this program Kingdom Now. What is that? It's a two-part word. It's the dominion of the king. God says, I want to show you how to walk in the king's dominion right here, right now. That's what he's talking about. He says, I want to give it to you. To those disciples who were there, absolutely. They had it shrouded. They didn't understand that God wanted to work in their lives. But he was looking at them that day and he says, I don't want this mystery to be a mystery anymore. I don't want you to live your life scratching your head, trying to figure out how to get this to work for you, how to get the dominion of the king to work in your life. He says, no longer a mystery. He says, it's going to become revelation. And he's going to begin to show us. He's going to show you and I how that this can work in our lives. And so there in Mark 4.11, he begins to teach us that this is not to be something that is concealed. In fact, I want you, if you would, to turn over to another scripture, book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9. People quote this a lot, but they don't quote the whole thing. They just quote part of it. And in 1 Corinthians 2, 9, it says, But it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor has entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for him. People stop right there and say, See, nobody can know. Nobody can see it. No one's heard all the good that God wants to do in our lives. But look at verse 10. It says, But God has revealed them to us through His Spirit. See, God says, Yeah, in your own self, we can't know how God works. I can't come up with my own methods to get into the kingdom of God. I think it's funny how I will talk to people and they will come up with their own, I call it homemade gospel, their 
homespun doctrine. Well, you know, they, I have a relationship with God on my own. I do things on my own way. God and I have a relationship. That's things that they will say. Well, I want to tell you, you and I can't do that. You and I cannot come up with our own methodologies. We can't come up with our own doctrines. We can't come up with our own thoughts of how God's going to work in our lives. That's what he's saying there. Eyes not seen, ears not heard, nor has been entered into the mind of God what, or mind of man what God has in store for us. That's true in of our own selves. But see, God says, no, that may be true of you in the natural. That's true of you without my word. But that doesn't have to be the reality of the rest of your life. He says, but God has revealed them to us. I want you to realize that what you're holding in your hand is a book of revelation. It's a book that says, I want to show you how I can work in your life. I want to show you how to walk in the blessing, how to walk in healing, how to walk in financial prosperity, how to walk in peace in your home, how to get your marriage healed, how to get your children where they're walking on the right path. It's all right there. And I want to drive this home before we get into the meat of the message because you and I have got to strip off the mindset that we can't know that it's just something out there and we've got to begin to look at the Word of God and say I know that within this Word is everything I need for life everything I need to walk in the kingdom right now into our lives if you'll go back there to Mark chapter 4 if you would for just a second look at what he says there in verse uh, 13 uh, he's going to begin to talk about this understanding of this parable there in Mark 4 13 listen what he says he said to them as he was talking about the parable of the seed he says do you not understand this parable he said then how will you understand all parables so let me help you with the parable of the seed the parable of the sower Many of you have heard about it, the four different types of soil, how that three didn't receive, only one of the four did receive. We'll talk about that in just a few moments. But I want you to really zone in on the weight or the priority that Jesus put on this parable. I might call the parable of the sower the granddaddy of all parables. It is the one parable that if you and I will understand it, if you and I will get revelation from it, it will cause the rest of the Bible to make sense. It will cause everything that God asks you to do to make sense. He said, if you don't understand this, how will you understand anything? You're watching Kingdom Now, and I want to encourage you to tell your family, your friends, those of you who you're connected on Facebook or any other social media, tell them about Kingdom Now because I believe it's being a blessing to you. But let's share this with others. We want to reach the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and I need you to help us spread the word. You can also view this program, Kingdom Now, at WBNA21.com. We'll say that one more time, WBNA21.com, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Anywhere around the world that has an internet connection, you can view this. And I believe that as it's been a blessing to you, if you'll share this program with others, it'll be a blessing to them as well. Thank you for watching Kingdom Now. Friends, I think that you and I need to stop and begin to analyze that statement. You, you and I need to stop and look at it and say, Jesus, is that true? Is it true? that for me to understand anything else in the Bible, I'm going to have to understand the parable that the Word is seed, that it behaves like seed, that it acts like seed, that it produces like seed, that everything that God wants to do is found like seed. That's what the parable says. And Jesus looked at His disciples that day when they said, Lord, we don't understand. And He said, look, if you don't understand this parable, you're not going to understand anything. That's where most people live. Christians go to church Sunday in, Sunday out. And God bless your hearts, those of you who come midweek service. That's a blessing. And I know that it does produce some great things in your life. 
But most people live far below what God has offered. Most people live with just accepting life on default settings. Just whatever's going to happen is going to happen. Not realizing that through the seed of the Word of God, we don't just have to take whatever comes to us. We don't just have to take whatever's in our surrounding. We can begin to change the settings. I saw a statement the other day where someone says that people live life on default settings, not realizing that you can customize your life. You can make choices. And you and I can make choices. But I want to tell you to make the right choice. Customize your life based on the Word of God. Realizing that the Bible can absolutely change the settings of how your life is going. It can change your family. It can change your future. It can change your ministry. It can bring healing to your body. I was talking to my pastor the other day and he was talking about a woman who had cancer and she had gotten down to something like 89 pounds and really she was given up for dead and in her own life she didn't know whether she could even be healed herself. And so she just decided that she would take the last few months of her life and spend time in the Word of God, reading it and reading it and reading the Word. And so she got a particular Bible that was able to help her to even read faster. She was reading the Bible through every 18 days, read the Bible through nearly 20 times in one year. But something powerful happened when she did that. As she began to read the Word, as she began to get this seed into the soil of her life, something began to happen. All of a sudden, when she was given up for dead, she was given up as you're going to die in the next few months, and she had almost resigned herself to that to some level. Healing began to spring forth in her body. What was happening? How did it happen? How did she walk in that? The seed was being implanted as she was reading the Word and getting the Word and attending to the Word and getting it in her eyes, keeping it in her mind, healing was beginning to be released into her body and now this body began to gain weight. Now this body began to fight that cancer and the doctors were able to look at her and say, you're healed. How do we walk in that revelation? How do we get those types of results on purpose? You get those by understanding what that Bible is understanding what the Word is. It's seed into our lives. And you know, when you begin to realize that, all of a sudden, the Word ceases to be something that you just endure. You know, a lot of people will look at the Bible and they will, they will say, you know, I have a hard time reading it. I have someone tell me the other day. They said, man, how can I discipline myself to read the Bible? I just, they said, I just can't seem to do it. I said, you need to get a revelation of what it is. You see, if you and I understand that the Bible, God's Word, is the connection point to everything that God wants to do in our lives. It's, it, it, it's the PowerPoint. It's the source. It's, it, it's, it's something that can change everything. Friends, when you and I get that revelation, you won't be able to keep us out of the Word. When I got that revelation, I couldn't keep myself out to this day. I love the Word of God. The reason, because I know what I'm doing. I know that when I read the Bible, I know that when I read scriptures that I have read many times before, I'm doing something. I am sowing seed that's going to change my life. When I go to church and I hear that preacher preach, maybe it's a message that I've heard a thousand times, but I know what's happening. Seeds are being implanted in the soil of my life. Seeds are coming in that are going to produce a harvest if I will release faith, if I will allow it to do that in my life. And you know that's important because what I want to share about the parable of the sower, I think it's going to be a revelation to many of you. He began to talk about how in verse 14 that the sower sows the Word. And I want to just talk to you about that for a moment. The Word before it's ever going to have effect in our lives is first going to have to be sown. Meaning I'm going to have to have received it into the soil of my life. I believe that Jesus was referencing the fact that God made man 
out of the dust of the earth, out of the soil of the ground. And as He made man out of soil, you and I are soil with the Spirit. And He says when you begin to take the Word as a seed and sow it into soil, sow it into soil of my mind, into my heart, get it into my ears, get it before my eyes, that when I take that into me, that I am sowing the Word. Friends, that's why it's so important for you to watch programs like Kingdom Now, for you to read books that help you in your Christian walk, for you to listen to CDs, for you to go to church, for you to get your Bible, get your Bible, get your Bible and read that. You're taking that seed and you're sowing it in. But friends, the Bible will have no effect on you at all until it's sown, until you hear it. You've got to hear it and hear it and hear it. And when you're hearing it, you're going to be receiving it saying, yes, I want that in my life. You and I need to change our attitude. Change our attitude. I like to say instead of enduring the Word, we enjoy the Word. Enjoy the Word. Delight in the Word and let it produce. But then he goes on from verses 15 on in the parable and he brings out something that I believe needs to, as a warning to you and I, that as powerful as the word seed is, as powerful as seed is in the ground, that the word will only produce, he gives four soils. Out of the four soils, it only produced in one. That's 25%. That means that 75% of people who heard the word of God it produced nothing. Nothing. Now you and I are familiar with scriptures maybe that where Jesus or God said that my word goes forth out of my mouth, it will accomplish that which I have sent it to do. That is true in a general sense. But it is not true in a specific sense. Meaning the word can come into me, but if I don't know how to receive it, if I don't know how to treat it when it gets in here, it won't produce. It won't do anything. And can you imagine somebody having the anointed, powerful Word of God engrafted inside of them and it produced nothing. In fact, I hear people say things like that to me quite often. They'll say, I know the Scriptures, meaning they've heard them before, they've listened to sermons before, and they're saying it's not producing anything in my life. Well, let me ask you a question. Is the problem the seed or is the problem the soil? Jesus said it was the soil. Jesus said when, when, when produce, when results are not happening in our life, it's not the Word's fault, it's the soil's fault. It was the same seed that was sown in all four soils. The same anointed word, the same powerful word in all four soils, but only one of them, it produced any results. That's like having four people hearing an anointed message, a powerful word into their lives, but based on how they received it, based on what they did with it when it came in, was the result of whether it was going to produce. Someone says, well, if it's God's Word, it'll just happen. If it's what God wants to do, it'll just happen. And friends, I'm going to tell you right now, that is just simply not the case. The Word is powerful. The Word will always produce when given the right environment, when received properly, when nurtured properly. You know, I like to tell the church when we have a guest speaker at the church, and I say it for the guest speaker's benefit, but I pray they also do the same thing for me. Apostle Paul said in the book of Colossians chapter 2, he said, you received me and my word as not being the word of a man, but as being the word of God, which it is. Thank you for watching Kingdom Now. I pray that revelation was powerful in your life. And I want to give you an opportunity 
to get this entire series called The Word Seed into your faith library. You know every book that we buy, every CD we purchase is an investment into what God is doing into our lives. And I want to give you an opportunity to get this entire series into your faith library. Call the number 502-413-0115, dial extension 2, and our operators will be able to take your information and we will rush this to you. And I believe it's going to be a blessing to you. It was revelation to the church and I think it'll be life changing to you as well. For those of you who can give $25 or more to this, I want to also include with the Word Seed series a Bible program called Power Bible CD. This is where you can put on your computer and it will be a great resource as you are doing your own Bible study. I have scoured the internet. I do many types of searches for what resources for me to study. And I have found this particular CD, this program, to be a great resource. It has with it Greek and Hebrew lexicons where you can hover your mouse over certain words and it will give you the definitions from the original Greek, from the original Hebrew. It will also show you every place in the Bible that word is translated and it really brings out the richness of the translations. But it also includes topical Bibles. You're familiar with Thompson Chain Reference. You're familiar with Knaves Topical Bibles and so many more. It it has all of that in this CD and I want to make it available to you along with the Word Seed series for $25 or more. Call the number on your screen, 502-413-0115 and I believe it's going to be a blessing to you. You can also email us at info, I-N-F-O, at evangelnorth.net, I-N-F-O, at evangelnorth.net and we'll get back to you and rush these products to you. But right now I want to say a word of prayer for you. Father, today I pray for my friends and Father, I thank you that there is power in your word and I loose the revelation, I loose wisdom into our lives that your word seed is going to begin to produce a harvest in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for watching. We're believing for God's best and God's kingdom now in your life. I'm John Carmichael, pastor at Evangel North Church. We are here in downtown Louisville by the beautiful Ohio River. But I want to encourage you to join us at Evangel North Church. We're located in Clarksville, Indiana, and we have a vision to reach Louisville and Southern Indiana. And I want to encourage you to come to Evangel North Church. We're located at 1732 Thames Drive. Our service times are 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. We also have church Wednesday nights at 7. Encourage you to come out. You can visit us at evangelnorth.net. Evangelnorth.net. Our Evangel North is a place where you can belong. You and your family can come and plug in to all the ministries that God has here. I believe that you will find your purpose at Evangel North Church. We look forward to seeing you.